Okay, so here I'm going to take you through the major body parts of an insect. And to do this, we'll start off by looking at a grasshopper. And for, in this case, it's a lubber grasshopper. Uh, lubbers are obviously are large and they are from North America. And they're used quite a lot for um, demonstration and teaching because they, they can be grown um, as, as stock and, and shipped out from the US to Australia. So what we've got here is a large grasshopper, um, Orderothopteron. Now before we begin going through the different body parts, the external body parts, it's good to remember your body axes because if you're looking at an insect you might have a similar, the same body part but it might be given a different name based on what axes you're looking at it. So it's really important to make sure you know which axes is which. So, for example, what we've got here as a top surface is the dorsal surface. So, running across the top here. Um, the sides are the laterals. And on the underside is the ventral surface, so under here. And we've also got the anterior, which is the head. And the posterior, which is the back end, the bum. And the reproductive organs. So, they're the major axes that you're, you've got to keep in mind when you're looking at insects in general. And also um, take into account that it's um, what we can see here. For example, these um, insects have this little saddle that go across them, but they don't. They sort of actually change um, the amount that is covered from the dorsal surface to the lateral surface. So it can be quite an important feature to take into account um, at different on different axes. So going through an insect. Insects are made up broadly of the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Now to work out which part starts where, the easiest way to do that is to turn it over and look at the ventral surface and find out where the, the legs are. So firstly, if I just touch the, um, the neck, that's that, that neck area is where the head is. And then the three pairs of legs that in, adult insects have come off the thorax. So the legs and the wings come off the thorax. So here we've got the first pair of legs, the second pair, and the third pair down here. So the thorax starts from the top here where the neck is and runs down to this line here, um, which is where the end of the, 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 the thorax um, is, and then that turns into the abdomen. So we've got the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Then what we'll look at now is actually the, the head parts. And what I've done is I've, I've prepared one earlier. Um, taking the, the head off the, the insect and what we've got here is the head and the head is again made up of lots of specific parts so firstly you've got the antennae which comes off the, the head and that's actually this is one which I've taken off the side here where it then has a um, you know, it's got a scape and a pedestal and a flagellum they're the major parts so it starts from normally the names when you come across them, they start from the basal ones first. So the, the, if they're an appendage, you get the name, the, the, the actual, the scape is the first part of the antennae coming off the body, then the pedestal, and then the long flagellum. What we also have here is the, the eyes. So we've got the compound eye, um, just over here, two compound eyes, plus also omatidium, which are little eye spots. So for this one, there's one in the center here and two on either side just near the eyes themselves. These are, these are to basically for light identification, so light dark. Now if these get covered, the compound eyes don't work. And this is the case for all, for all insects with compound eyes. They need their omatidia to see well. And the best omatidiums are shown, they're easily seen in a cicada, which I'll put up as a, um, an image with the, um, with the prac as well to go with the video. But there, again, the eyes are key parts for the uh, these. You sometimes find um, just some insects with eye spots. They're a lot more likely to be, when they're adults, they're likely to be found in leaf litter. Um, but most animals with large eyes, compound eyes, are free living. You know, the, the bigger the eyes, um, and also the more forward facing the eyes, the more likely they are to be predators or, or really acrobatic flies. Dragonflies, for example, have their, and also I've got their eyes facing forwards and upwards. Um, praying mantids, which are predators, also have a massive field of view and their eyes can be actually off the side of their head a bit. 
so they can actually triangulate um, their prey a lot easily, more easily. Next what we have are the mouth parts. Now I'll just go back to the um, whole insect here for a sec. Now what we have on the whole insect is, um, if you look at the, the mouth parts, you can see there, you can actually see this little flap here, and that's the labrum. That actually protects the, um, the, the mandibles. And we have that over here. So taken off, that's, that's the, the labrum there. And here we've also got, so on the, the far side here, when you take that off, there's a mandible. And for the, you just see the mandible that I've, I've dissected off already here. Then where this um, little palp comes off, that's the maxillary, that's the maxilla and that's the maxillary palp. And that's this one I've taken off here. And then underneath is the, um, the labium and the labial palps. So they all fit together on the side there. So the labrum covers the mandible, then you have the maxilla, maxilla and maxillary palps, then the labial palps come up underneath it. The other thing to note, so they're the main mouth parts. So these the maxilla, maxillary palps hold the food from the side and the labium and the labial palps actually hold it from underneath. So as the mandibles are working, they're moving the, the food towards the mouth and they're basically working like extra sets of hands doing their jobs to move the food into the mouth. The mandibles um, themselves, you can see here, have got quite a large muscle on them and they're also toothed, so they've got small teeth on them. And these actually, these teeth will actually um, become, um, the, over time, they'll start to wear down. And you'll find that they'll, once a lot of the, um, the, they will stop, they'll still keep on eating, but they can actually die of starvation because the, the tooth becomes so smoothed over, they can't break through the cell tissue when they're feeding. The other thing to note here with the, the head is that each, it's not actually made up of just one single plate. There's lots of little plates in there. And each of these plates has a specific name. It's called a sclerite. So broadly across the whole body, there's a whole suite of sclerites. And depending on where you find those sclerites, they're given specific names, which we'll talk about a bit later. And, but they're also, also the, um, the connections between the sclerites are called sutures. So more broadly, the sutures are found over the body and div divides up the, um, the plates as they, they come forward. So that's the, the major parts of the, the head. If we then go and have a look at the thorax, what we've got here is the, um, we've got three parts of the thorax and basically the three parts are where the legs come off. So we've got the prothorax, where the first pair of legs comes off, the mesothorax, the middle pair of legs and the metathorax. And you can also see these little these pits here, and these little pits are actually the um, where the there's muscle connections occurring because they are uh, they've got an exoskeleton. They've got to have their muscles working against something. So the pits here actually you know have a a connection to the muscle, which then they can work off to move the legs or also to move the, the wings as they're flying around. So when we're looking at these animals, um, so we'll then look at also identify. We'll just then now take off the the legs and the wings, so you can actually see, or well, at least the legs, so you can see the thorax a bit better. Okay, so here we've got the, the thorax, and. So again, you can see the prothorax, and you can see that the actual, this little shield actually extends over the mesothorax and the metathorax. Now again, the, the wings actually come off the second and third pair, so the wings come off. The prothorax is, on this particular animal is protecting the wing bases. So if we do, if we take off that prothorax, you can see in there, it's a bit of gut. Um, the first pair of wings comes off here, so the first pair of wings comes off 
the mesothorax and the second pair comes off the metathorax. And when we're looking at this, the, the lateral sides is called the, um, the, the pronotum. So in this, yeah, the, the pronotum is, is this part here. Now, when we're looking at, particularly with the, the sclerites, so the ones that are on the top broadly, it's known as the tergum, and each one of those individually is known as a tergite, so each individual sclerite is, uh, is, has a particular name called a tergite. When we look at them on the side, here, we can see that they're, well these ones are called, the, that's called the pleuron, covering this whole area. Just take this wing off so I make it a bit easier to see. So this area here is called the pleuron, and each individual um, plate is a pleurite, and then the sternum is on the bottom. So the sternum and each one of these is a sternite. The other thing that is Hopefully, see here is another where the it's where the leg comes out. But you can also see this little pit here, and that's a breathing hole. So that's a spiracle. So that's actually where the insect is actually will, will get air in when they're breathing. So the oxygen can can go directly to the organs that are required for for movement. So insects don't breathe through their mouth; they just feed through their mouth. They take the um, the oxygen in through these. Spiracles and there's also spiracles along there's spiracles in most body parts, particularly they're larger near the legs, but also there's some small ones along the abdomen here, which so that takes oxygen directly to the reproductive and digestive system, but also releases CO2 out. Okay, now we'll have a look at the legs and we'll have a look at one. Let's move it this other way. So we'll have a look at this is the hind leg here. Okay, so the connection to the body, so these are if you go back to the the whole animal, that's here. And the first part, the basal part is called the coxa. So that's the coxa just in there. And that, that first segment of the leg. So again, base will move away, so the coxa. Then we come to the, the trochanter is also like a little, it's a bit like a little elbow that's on the animal, so just in here. So you've got the coxa, trochanter. Then the large jumping where the muscular area is, is the femur, so along here. Then you have the, the tibia and then the tarsus down here. So the tarsus are the little pads and sometimes, and then you'll also have a pretarsus where the claw is. So they're the major um, parts of the leg. So if we just have a look at them again on the whole animal. So you've got the, the, the coxa and the trochanter, then the femur, the tibia, the tarsus and the pretarsus.